Hello everyone, welcome back to WB Blacksmithing. Hopefully there's sound this time. I really hope there is, or I'm gonna probably just have to retake this. But today we're forging a J hook out of 3 8 inch square stock. They are six inch pieces. I'm using my gas forge so I can do like production forging. But I only have one piece in here just for the sake of showing you. This is my last one that I have to forge. I've been doing two at a time in there, but we have to start out by making a square taper on one end. But basically, if you can't see it here, doing is hitting on one side, then turning 90 degrees and flipping. I'm using the horn because it's faster, because there's less surface area compared to the face. It doesn't cool out your, your work pieces fast either. But now we're going to go clean that up. We're going to round it out, and we have to bend it. So I'll explain those things along the way. Basically for the flattening part, you just hit it flat on the face and then flatten it up with your flat hammer face. You probably won't have a great time getting smooth flat faces with a rounding hammer or any other thing but a flat face here. It really helps if your hammer is dressed for forging though, like if you get one from the hardware store. It'll be pretty rough on the edges. You can see this one's got radii around the face here, pretty heavy. It's pretty smooth. But now, for rounding out, we're gonna hit on the diagonals. Flip 90 degrees, hit on the diagonals again. Corners, the, sh the 90 degree corners there to get like an octagonal taper. Straighten it up a bit. Now we're going to finish rounding it out in the next heat. One tip though, make sure you do the, well yeah, make sure you do the tip, no pun intended, first because it cools off quicker and if you hit it and try to forge it whenever it's too cold, then you'll probably get a cold shut in the tip of the hook and that's not very pleasant. It can catch on clothes, it can catch on anything else, it can cut you if it's sticking out and worse yet probably it can break completely off the little tip, the little scroll and I've got another pot, i got a pile there there is what I'm talking about. If that's cold shut, it can break off. You don't really want that. And sorry, I'm not gonna be drilling, or I'm not gonna be punching these, because that's just how I forge them for more production work. But now you just kind of spin your work around like easily and rapidly. Octagonal cross 
section, I just go around and round it from this point. As you can see, I did not start at the tip. You can probably see on camera how much colder this is. This is still cherry. This is black at the tip. So you have cherry back here in the thicker section. So you want to do the tip first. I'm not going to try to forge that and show you the cold shut because I need these. Yeah. yeah, this is only my first time really using the gas forge, but I can tell you what, it's a lot easier than using a coal forge. Still think I prefer the coal forge though, but yeah, it's really not taking much propane out of the tank either. Started out, it was almost an empty tank, and I ran it for probably two and a half hours so far. It's still running. Guess I'll see how long it lasts. It's stuff up pretty fast too. Sorry about the last video, there was no sound. That kind of sucked. You can see that I'm stopping with the hammering every so often. That's because this anvil here isn't completely flat. It's kind of sway back. So if I hit it and it's not flat on the anvil, then I have a good chance with these tongs of it flipping up and hitting me in the eyes or the face. I don't want to do that. I'd rather just pause and then reposition my tongs. straight before bending because then I know it bends evenly. There we go. So now we're going to bend it in the next heat. Hopefully you can see that that's rounding out pretty easily. If this dies I'm going to be very upset or if it runs out of space I'm going to be very upset. Hopefully it doesn't before we get this done. We've only got a little bit more to do, and hopefully I'll do a video of punching steel pretty soon because a lot of people like to punch their J-hooks, and whenever I have one or two to do, that's what I do, but not whenever I have like two dozen or more, I just would like to drill them. Because punching can be sort of time consuming. Most of the problem is they're very small holes in these J-hooks that I make, so I don't want to have to take all my time and just punch all of these out and waste my fuel or other resources. So you can see I bent over the horn. You can bend steel if you don't have a horn. It could be a little bit more difficult to get a clean bend. You're probably going to have to radius your flat block pretty heavily to get it clean, but it still is doable. So this is what it's looking like now, and then I'll take my scrolling tongs. Yes, I use scrolling tongs, and I do the little scroll. It's just simpler for me. Some people call it cheating, but it's one of the tools I made a few years ago now. I think this was my first, no, second pair of tongs but it makes it a lot easier just to do a little scroll on the end. I still do hammering because these scrolling tongs aren't the best, but they really get it started for me. So I've got some yellow heat and I start it there. And I hit it downwards like this to get more material down over there. And I go and close it. Make sure it's Whatever's hanging on to it, if it's fabric, make it more uniform. That's a bit of a small scroll, but I think you get the idea. I'm trying to hurry up for this camera because it dies and uh, fills up the memory very fast. Do the little 
sit down on the end here for the mounting plate, that's what I call it. A little mounting plate. I really hope you guys can hear this. I'm going to be pretty disappointed if you can't. But I'm going to go ahead and explain this real quick before we do it. We're going to do half on, half off blows. Pretty much if this is your ample face right here in my hand, you want to do half on, half off, half of the hammer face on the anvil, and half of the hammer face off, and just hit it right here to get the little sit down put in much easier than pretty much any other method you can use. I go back here towards the tail or the heel of my anvil because it's got a sharper radius. This by far is not the sharpest radius I've got in my shop for an anvil, but it's over here by the gas board, which is what I'm using. And I like it because it's got the smaller horn compared to my bigger anvil, which actually is why I'm working over here. Plus, I don't really have time to light the cold forge today. So now I have this, I can use it to my advantage. But while we're waiting here, another thing that I've been working on is this, well, I haven't necessarily been working on it. I worked on it so far for about an hour probably. I was about to grind it and my wheel on my 2x72 belt grinder melted the bearing because I traded an anvil for it. It was used. So I've got one new wheel and replaced that. Then I sanded it to a 120 grit here, hardened it. Now I have to temper it. I want to temper it selectively so back here will be darker than at the edge hopefully like a light straw right at the edge and a, like a dark blue or purple at the spine and this obviously isn't hardened or tempered but yeah this is going to be one of my fancier knives i don't do many of them i want to start doing more that i have now that i have a 2x72 belt grinder but yeah there's that hopefully we can do a good knife on YouTube someday. Probably shouldn't have done that since I hardened it, but I selectively hardened it. So it should not have shattered. Should be all right. So now I put a little cube on there. Half on, half off close. Do a little sit down. I'll make sure I get it all straightened up. That scroll is not very desirable. I'm going to fix that after the video's off. But yeah, there's the general idea for you. And yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. Finally, I know I'm going to be working on some big projects here. I bought wood to frame out in addition to my shop off the side. That way, might not have a good reference point, but it's at the side, right side of my shop, I guess you could say, opposite my coal forge. It's going to be 8 by 10. It's just going to be a little storeroom for anvils and stuff that I'm selling, but hopefully I can bring you along for that. And in a few months, I'm getting 20 100-pound anvils, and those will be for sale, all of them. But they're cast steel, tempered, and hardened. Uh... Yeah, that's basically it. I'll give you more information when they get here. In the meantime, I gotta make a lot of money. So, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Bye.